Good afternoon. How y'all doing today? Oh, that was pretty weak. I think you could do better than that. How y'all doing today? <laughs> Wonderful. Much better. I'm Saran. I am the founder of Code Newbie. We are the most supportive community of programmers and people learning to code. This is my very first Red Hat Summit, so I'm super pumped, super excited to be here. Today, I'm going to give you a talk, and I'm going to share with you the key to coding progress. Yes, this is a big, big talk, big moment. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to tell you a story. So two years ago, I was sitting in my hotel room, and I was preparing for a big talk the next morning. And usually, the night before I give a big talk, I'm super nervous. I'm anxious. I'm nauseous. I'm wondering why I keep doing this to myself. All the speakers backstage know exactly what I'm, what I'm talking about. And the night before, my mom knows this, so she almost always calls just to check in, to see how I'm doing, to see how I'm feeling. And she called about midnight the night before, and she said, how are you? How are you doing? Are you ready? And I said, you know what? This time, I feel really good. I feel confident. I think I'm going to do a great job. And the reason was because two months ago, I'd already given that talk. In fact, just a few days prior, they had published the video of that talk on YouTube. And I'd gotten some really, really good positive feedback. I'd gotten feedback from emails and DMs and Twitter. And I said, man, I know people really like this. It's going to be great. In fact, that video was the most viewed video of that conference. And I said to my mom, I said, you know what? Let's see how many people loved my talk. So the good news is that 14 people liked it, and a lot more people didn't. And I saw this eight hours before I'm supposed to give that exact same talk, and I said, Mom, i got to call you back. Do you like how I did that to hang up the phone, as if that's how cell phones work? Yeah? And so I looked at this, and I said, oh my goodness, clearly there's a huge disconnect. I thought people really liked it. I thought they were, thought they were into it. And this showed me that something was wrong. What do you do? What do you do when you're about to give that same talk in eight hours? How do you begin finding out what the problem is so you can fix it? I have an idea. Let's read the comments. You got to believe. You got to have some optimism. Come on. I said, let's read the comments because I'm sure we'll find some helpful feedback, some constructive criticism, some insights to help me figure out how to make this talk great. Um, so that didn't happen. But I did find some really colorful language and some very creative ideas of what I could do with myself. <sighs> now, there are some kids in the audience, so I will, not, uh, I will not grace you with these comments. But there was this one comment that did a really great job of capturing the sentiment of what everyone else was saying. I can only show you the first part because the rest is not very family friendly, but it reads like this. How about you talk about coding and not fake societal issues? See, the thing about that talk is it wasn't just a code talk. It was a code and talk. It was about code and something else. That talk touched on code and social justice. I talked a lot about how the things that we build and the way we build them affect real people and their problems and their struggles. And that was absolutely not OK. Not OK. We talk about code and code only, not the social justice stuff. It also talked about code and diversity. Ugh. I think we all know that diversity is really about lowering the bar. It forces us to talk about people and their issues and their problems and their history, and we just don't do that, OK? Absolutely inappropriate when it comes to a tech talk. That talk touched on code and feelings. And feelings are squishy. They're messy. They're icky. And a lot of us feel uncomfortable with feelings. Feelings have no place in technology, no place in code. Ugh. We want to talk about code and code. I want you to show me that API. I want you to show me that new framework, that new tool that's going to solve my problems. That's all I care about. I want to talk about code and give me some more code with it. Now, I host a podcast called Command Line Heroes. It's an original podcast from Red Hat. Super excited about it. If you haven't checked it out, you totally should. 
And what I love about this show is we talk about these really important moments in open source, these inflection points, moments where we see progress, where we move forward. And what I realized looking back at those episodes is all of those episodes have a code and something. So let's look at a few of those. The first two episodes focused on the history of operating systems. And it's a two-part episode, part one and part two. And there's lots of different ways we can talk about operating systems. For these two episodes, we started by talking about Windows and Mac OS and how these were two very powerful, very popular operating systems, but a lot, of, a lot of developers were frustrated with them. They were closed, you couldn't see inside, you couldn't see what it was doing, and I as the developer want to know what it's doing on my machine. So we kind of had a little bit of a war. One such developer who was very frustrated said, I'm going to go off and do my own thing. My name is Linus, this thing is Linux, and I'm going to rally all these other developers, all these other people from all over the world to come together and build this new thing with me. That is a code and moment. In that case, it was code and frustration. It was a team of developers, a world of developers, quite literally a world of developers, who said, I'm frustrated, I'm fed up, I want something different, and I'm going to do something about it. And what's really beautiful about frustration is it's a sign of passion. We're frustrated because we care, because we care so much, we love so deeply that we want to do something better. Next episode is the Agile Revolution. This one was episode three. Now, the Agile Revolution is a very, very important moment in open source and technology in general. And this was in response to the way that we used to create products. We used to get this huge stack of specs, all these docs from the higher-ups, and we'd take it, and we'd go to our little corner, and we'd quietly code and build. And then a year would pass, two years would pass, a few years would pass, and we'd finally burst forth with this new product and hope that users liked it and loved it and used it. And I know some of y'all still do that today. It's OK, no judgment. Now, sometimes that worked. And a lot of times it didn't. But whether or not it actually worked, it hurt. It was painful. These developers did not enjoy this process. So what happened? A dozen developers got together and literally went off into their own and created something called the Agile Manifesto. Now, this was another code and moment. Here, it's code and anger. These developers were so angry that they literally left civilization, went off into a mountain to write the Agile Manifesto. And what I love about this example is these developers did not work at the same company, were not on the same team, they knew each other from different conferences and such, but they really came from different walks of life. And they agreed that they were so angry, they were going to literally rewrite the way we created products. Next example, DevOps, tear down the wall. This one was episode four. Now, this is a bit different because we're not talking about a piece of technology or even the way we code here. We're talking about the way we work together, the way that we collaborate. And here we have our operations folks and our developers. And we've created this new kind of weird place thing called DevOps. And DevOps is interesting because we've gotten to a point where we have new tools, new toys, so that our developers can do a lot of the stuff that only the operations folks used to be able to do. That thing that took days, weeks, months to set up, I can do it with a slider. It's kind of scary. I can do it with a few buttons. And here we have another code and moment. And here, that blank is fear for two reasons. The operations folks are looking over at the developer folks and thinking, that was my job. I used to be able to do that. Am I still valuable? Do I have a place in this future? Do I need to retrain? But there's also another fear, which is, do those developers know what they're doing? Do they understand the security implications? Do they appreciate how hard it is for something to scale? and how to do that properly. And I'm really interested and excited to see where we go with that, where we take that emotion. If we look at all of season one of the podcast, we see that there's always a code and, whether it's a code and frustration, 
a code in anger or a code in fear, it always boils down to code and feelings. Feelings are powerful. In almost every single episode, we see that that movement forward, that progress, is tied back to some type of emotion. And for a lot of us, this is uncomfortable. Feelings make us feel weird. And a lot of those YouTube commenters definitely do not like this whole feeling stuff. Don't be like those YouTube commenters. If there's one thing you take away from this whole talk, let it be that. Don't be like these YouTube commenters. Feelings are incredibly powerful. So the next time that you're working on a project, that you're having a conversation about a piece of software or a new piece of technology, and you start to get worked up, you get angry, you get frustrated, maybe you get worried, you get anxious, you get scared, I hope you recognize that feeling as a source of energy. I hope you take that energy and you help us move forward. I hope we take that to create the next inflection point, that next step in the right direction. Feelings are your superpowers, and I hope you use your powers for good. Thank you so much.